Hey, what's up, Street Talks? This is Eric Kim from the Eric Kim Street Photography Blog. So, I wanted to do a quick video presentation on how to shoot street portraits. So, the reason why I wanted to make this lecture is because a lot of people out there who want to overcome their fear of shooting street photography, and they also really like to photograph people. So, uh, to start the presentation, one of the first questions that people often ask is, what is the difference between a quote-unquote street portrait versus, you know, street photography? So, for me, street shooting a street portrait is just another type of street photography so if i could describe this imagine street photography as the genre and street portrait as being one of the tentacles that's connected to the larger part of street photography this is kind of a controversial point because i know a lot of people who think street photography is only candid photos of strangers in the streets and you know i think it's totally cool everyone has their own definition of street photography for me street portraiture fits within street photography. And if you actually look at the, the history of street photography, you could see a lot of great photographers, quote-unquote street photographers in history, like uh, Diane Arbus, that most people consider a quote-unquote street photographer, did most of her photos, which were street portraits. Um, similarly, you have Vivian Meyer, who shot with her rolly flex, shot a lot of quote-unquote candid, quote-unquote street portraits, in the sense that she photographed, uh, you know, a lot of photographs most, mostly uh, focused on people. And also I think with street portraits, it's kind of, you know, you're you're more interested in the character, you're more interested in the person. And of course, on top of that, you'd like to get interesting gestures, little facial expressions and a sense of place. But ultimately with the street portrait, this is kind of uh, the biggest concern. And when it comes to shooting cold, cold street portraits, uh, I guess that's my specialty. And it's actually my closest interest because if you never met me in person, believe it or not, I really love people and uh, I'm an extreme extrovert. I get energy when I'm around other people. And I'm just really drawn to interesting characters, uh, as Bruce Gilden calls it. And I feel that sometimes there's moments where I want to capture candid uh, street photos of strangers without their permission. But other times I just want to go up to them. I want to chat with them. I want to hear their life story. I want to hear what they're about. And... There are also certain circumstances, like in this photograph uh, in downtown LA, um, you know, guy had you know face and a neck tattoo, and you know, oftentimes when I'm afraid to shoot a photo without permission, uh, a good option is always to approach him and ask for permission, say, oh, you know, uh, you look really cool, um, and I think it's really important when you're shooting street portraits uh, to approach people, quickly develop rapport by saying, hello, my name is Eric, uh, I'm a photographer and today I'm out taking photos of interesting people and you could also say oh I'm a photography student which is also a good line and you could look at them you know say why you're interested in them so oh you know I think your tattoos look badass uh, do you mind if I made a few portraits of you and when it comes to shooting uh, street portraits one one big suggestion I would give is rather than saying can I take your photo I'd recommend say can I make your photo the difference between taking a photo and making a photo is that taking a photo is like you're kind of trying to steal their soul. Whereas making a photo, it's much more intentional. It's much more about the art. And uh, the, the phrase making a photo actually is a European phrase. Uh, us in, the, in North America and especially the States, we say take a photo. And you think about taking a photo as like kind of stealing their soul. And so if you approach someone and you say, oh, do you mind if I make your portrait? And uh, also the key thing is say portrait, not picture because portrait sounds a little bit more distinguished and it sounds a little bit more um, respectful and on top of that by establishing the fact that you know I'm a photographer or you know I'm a photography student then people often feel kind of you know they're they're more willing to help you out because you know if you're a student you know you're just doing this for assignment no one's taking you seriously they're not they know that's not anything professional or anything like that not only that but I don't think it's dishonest to say I'm a photography student even if you're not enrolled into a photography course uh, the reason being is that yeah I think all of us were lifelong learners and even though I teach you know I still consider myself a student and so you know once people say yeah sure you you know I'm, I'm cool with it um, you know you go out you go ahead and make their photos so there's certain tips and tricks I'll give you guys along the way and the also the good thing about shooting a street portrait is that if people let, let's say you know you're afraid of eliciting uh, a negative response from somebody if you shoot a candid photo without their permission, you know, there is actually a likelihood that they're going to get really angry at you and might get aggressive either uh, physically or verbally, whatever. If you approach somebody and you ask permission to take their photograph, they're not just going to suddenly just punch you in the face, right? They, 
you've you've given them the power to either say yes or no. So no one. So let's say you see someone interesting, like you know, guy with a face tattoo or whatever, and you approach him and say, "Oh, excuse me, sir, you look really cool. I love your tattoos. Do you mind if I made a photo of you or made a portrait of you?" He's not gonna look at you. He's like, "Fuck you!" and just punch you in the face. No, it's it's gonna be like he might say, "Oh no, fuck off," or "I'm not interested." Might walk away, whatever. But you know you've kind of given this person the power to say yes or no. And so I think, in a sense, asking for permission is a lot more respectful than just shooting the shots candidly. Sometimes people ask me, you know, what percentage of photos do I shoot candidly versus with permission? I probably shoot about 70% candidly without permission and about 30% with permission. And sometimes there are also situations where someone's walking really, really quickly and you don't want to just get right in their face and take a photo of their you know, head on. Then by stopping them and asking them to, you know, get a close up on their face. This kind of photos are this kind of photos are possible when you're shooting a street portrait, not always when you're shooting uh, candid photos. So, I know there's a lot of people out there, maybe yourself, where you kind of have this fear of approaching strangers. So, if you're afraid of shooting a stranger or approaching a stranger or even talking with strangers, congratulations, you're a normal human being. Um, you know, if you think about us as still having the the DNA of a hunter gatherer, you know, you lived in a small tribe, you know, 50 to 150 people, everyone kind of knew each other. And if someone was a stranger and they weren't part of your tribe, they might be a potential enemy. So when you're out in public, you know, you're generally supposed to be wary of strangers, right? Um, you know, there's all these crazy stories of, you know, kids being kidnapped and, you know, you can't trust strangers. And so I think even nowadays, you know, people are even more skeptical of strangers in the past. Like, is someone trying to sell you something or is someone going to take your photo and put on, you know, some weird upon Facebook or some weird porn website. You never know, right? And there are qu there are some very um, quick ways to um, build a sense of rapport and trust. Uh, a very sub subtle thing too is, um, you know, when you're giving someone a compliment, so he's like, you know, I think your, tat your tattoos look badass or, you know, I love your face, I love your hair, I love your nails. And it's a little bit hard for me to describe this, but... Um, slightly tapping somebody on the shoulder so not like tap 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 but just a giant uh, a light gentle touch on the shoulder and a small bit of physical intimacy believe it or not could actually quickly build rapport with a stranger and you know you're like oh no eric you're crazy but trust me i've done this like hundreds if not thousands of times and where i actually got the idea was they did this psychological study where uh, waitresses or waiters they would uh, you know see what influence getting a big tip. So half, this, half the waiters and waitresses just said, oh, you know, how's your meal? And just walked on. The other half said, how's your meal? And just slightly, very subtly just touched them on the shoulder. Guess who got the higher tip? Bingo, you got it. It's number two. So uh, I think they got about 15% more tips. So not to say that you're trying to get money from the, the, the strangers you're trying to photograph, but sometimes a slight physical touch is a very quick way to build uh, physical intimacy. And uh, another way I'm able to quickly build rapport with my subjects is I'll just extend my hand and say, oh, you know, my name's Eric. How are you doing? And if you extend your hand like you're about to give them a handshake, 99.9% .9 of people automatically respond by shaking or sticking out their hand and shaking your hand back. And once you kind of built that uh, intimacy and that uh, relationship, then your subject is actually much more likely to say yes. And also when it comes to shooting, um, the fear of shooting strangers is, I often think that the fear of photographing a stranger um, is you're afraid of the, the rejection. So if any of you guys have ever, you know, was in high school and was really nerdy like I was, uh, trying to approach somebody and ask them out on a date or to a dance, sometimes the fear of being rejected and being humiliated could actually be worse than the actual rejection itself. So know that in street photography, don't be so much, uh, don't be, don't be so afraid of being rejected. Um, I'll tell you just a random story. I remember when I was in high school, I wanted to ask this really pretty girl uh, to the high school prom or something like that. And, you know, so I'm super nervous and you know, I'm just trying to convince myself not to, to do it. But I thought to myself, look, I'm going to regret it if I don't even try. So I approach her at lunch and I say, oh, you know, I don't know, Jenny, whatever. Um, you know, I was wondering if you had a date for the prom. And, you know, she looks at me and she's like, oh, you know, Eric, you're such a nice guy. And, you know, you know where that heads. And she's like, um, you know, oh, sorry, I already have a date, but maybe next time. And, of course, I was crushed. But I realized that 
the rejection itself wasn't as bad as I expected. What I expected in my head was for her to be like, oh my God, Eric, you think you go out with me? You're a loser and I'm way harder. I'm too hot for you. You know, she calls up all her friends like, hey, this loser Eric asked me on a date and they all start laughing at me. So uh, same thing in street photography. Um, don't be so afraid of rejection. Uh, one of the assignments I often give um, in the workshops is the five yes, five no challenge. And the concept is, you, know, you approach a bunch of strangers and you ask permission to photograph them and you intentionally want to get five people to say yes and five people to say no. Generally, people get the five yeses pretty quickly and it's actually harder to get five no's than you would think it is. And sometimes um, the scariest looking people could actually end up being the, the nicest people. Like, you know, you photograph a guy with a face tattoo and it's like, oh, you mind if I take a photo of you? And you expect them to say no because they look kind of scary because they have a face tattoo. They're like, yeah, sure, why don't you go, go ahead. I don't know why everyone's so scary to me. And then you're like, oh, maybe it's because you have a face tattoo. No, but but seriously, like uh, I have a lot of friends who have tattoos and, you know, oftentimes you judge a book by its your uh, by its cover and you know, that's how most human beings work. But if you actually try to step outside your comfort zone and interact with strangers that you, know, you don't know who they are or their background is, most people are actually quite friendly. And the, the biggest thing I learned about shooting street uh, photography and street portraits are is that more people are friendly than you would imagine and street photography and shooting street portraits has actually helped regain my sense of uh, confidence and happiness and positivity for just kind of strangers around the world so uh, for this presentation you might be watching this presentation because you're about to attend one of my street portrait workshops or you know you just want to learn and i want to keep this open to everyone but i wanted to give you just some practical street portrait tips uh, i have about like 22 of them so Hang on, hang on for the ride. And these are all the contact sheets, aka the behind the scenes photos for me to just narrate and give you a sense of what I do. So my first tip is keep working the scene until they forget about you. So oftentimes when you, sh you ask a stranger, you approach a stranger to take their photograph, um, they're going to be like, oh yeah, sure. And you take a photo and then you get really nervous or you just don't want to disturb them. You say thank you and you walk away. The biggest mistake when it comes to shooting street portraits or even street photography in general is only taking one photo. So you don't want to take only one photo. Take as many photos as humanly possible. And what you'll often find is, you know, when you're taking photos of people in the beginning, the first, you know, 30 seconds or a minute, they're like really, really aware of you. But the longer you stick around, the more they start to ignore you and then their facial expressions tend to be a lot more natural. So if you ask for a stranger to to photograph them, you know, a lot of them will smile or put up the peace sign. You could just ask them to stop doing that, to not smile, look into the lens, or you know, just ask them, act them to act natural. And another tip is just tell people, oh, pretend like I'm not here. And you know, so they're doing their thing and just keep shooting, keep shooting. And uh, often the, the the expressions you get are much more natural. So um, this is the contact sheet of uh, the photo I took of this guy here. So you could see how many photos I've taken. I've taken one, two, three, four. Okay, I took about 60 photos of him. And I shot this on a Ricoh GR. And um, tip number two is that oftentimes it's okay to ask for a subject to just move a little bit. So if you approach a stranger that's interesting, most likelihood where they're step, uh, standing, the background's either going to be distracting, there's going to be like trees or telephone wires or all this other random stuff stuck in, uh, sticking out of their head, you could just ask them to move to the side where you have a much simpler background. Or in this case, um, I asked him to uh, later on to stand in front of this uh, advertisement at H&M in San Francisco. And so you could see, even though it's a, it's a posed photo where I asked to shoot him with permission, you kind of have this nice juxtaposition or contrast between this guy with the San Francisco hat, face tattoos, kind of scruffy. Um, and you have this woman who's an advertisement in the background kind of looking over his shoulder. So it kind of adds, creates a better story. And if you look at my contact sheet, you could see um, the two photos are highlighted on the bottom and the bottom right. One photo is this photo. And you could see how many photos I had to shoot uh, before I got the, the final shot. And another tip, tip number three is when you're shooting street portraits, sometimes people don't want to be photographed, like they don't want their faces photographed, but most people are actually okay with photographing their hands. And I've actually found that sometimes photographing someone's hands can be more interesting than their faces. Um, in terms of a hierarchy, I would say first, people's faces are always the most interesting. There's a, uh, there's a saying that eyes are the windows to the, the soul. 
And after capturing someone's face or their eyes, then capturing their hands or the hand gesture could also be very interesting. So in this case, I quite like both of these photos. They're, they're very different photos, but um, this photograph I really like because you know it's kind of the half bitten apple and so you think of Adam and Eve. He's kind of got like really gritty hands, but I really like the hand gesture and the, the way he's holding it. It's very gentle. And someone told me later, it almost looks like a, a Mac logo as well. Another practical tip when shooting street portraits is try to ask them to take one photo of them looking into the camera and one photo of them not looking into the camera. So the photo on the left is the photo I shot before the one on the right. And it took me a long time to decide whether I liked the, the shot on the left or the shot on the right. Ultimately, I like the shot on the right because I generally like eye contact my photos. I feel like there's a little more intimacy because if you get a, a street portrait of a stranger looking directly at you, then it's almost like he's looking into the soul of your viewer. So if you often go to museums and look at paintings or portraits of uh, you know, people, they're almost always looking at the viewer. And it kind of gives you the effect that you know, when you're looking at the image and you're walking around the, the gallery that they're constantly looking at you and it feels more intimate. Uh, the shot on the left, I think, is also a nice moment because he's not looking at you and it shows maybe a little bit more of his soft side. But ultimately, I think kind of his, his barren look of him just looking straight into me is, uh, for me, a stronger image. And, and this is a close-up of the other shot. Tip number five. Another practical tip I have when it comes to shooting street portraits or street photography or just photography in general. I'm not a big fan of cropping because I think cropping kind of makes you a lazy photographer. I used to be a serial quote quote cropaholic and I would just always crop photos and I think it made me a very lazy photographer in the sense that whenever I took photos I didn't really think about the the composition and framing too much and I would just say ah, I could just crop it later and what this ended up is you know my compositions would be really lousy and the aspect ratios like I would crop square I'd crop landscape panoramic whatever but now um, one of the biggest tips I got when it comes to um, shooting is while you're shooting take lots of shots of course and just kind of toss your subject in the center of the frame. And while you're shooting, specifically look at the edges of your frame. Because the human eye could only, you know, we're pretty tunnel vision. We only look at like 30% of a frame at a single time. So often if you're shooting, if you're looking at the edges, believe me, this is probably the best thing that's going to help your framing. So this is a photo that I took recently, which I really, really like. Um, it's like my Pinocchio nose girl. Shot this digitally on a Ricoh GR. And actually the nice thing about shooting with uh, a compact camera or a camera with LCD screen is that it's often easier to frame photos because it's easier to look at the edges rather than always using a viewfinder where sometimes it's hard to look at the edges. But anyways, in this photograph, you know, it was kind of golden hour and I'm teaching a workshop. And actually two of my other students uh, stopped this girl and asked for permission and I totally photobombed them. And um, there was really nice light and I see, uh, if you could see, um, the edge of the wall, her the, the nose of her shadow um, is kind of looping around, so it makes it look larger, uh, longer than it is. And you know, she's standing there and just kind of worked the scene, took lots of different photographs. Um, tip number six is if you ask to shoot uh, a stranger's portrait, one tip to make a more dramatic or more um, nostalgic or empathetic photo is just asking your subject to look down. So in this photograph, because she's looking down, not looking um, up, uh, psychologically it's like she's down, maybe a little bit depressed, a little bit more moody or something like that. And you could see, you never know when the best shot's gonna happen. That's why it's so important to work the scene. Um, in, this, in this circumstance, the best shot outlined in red is kind of towards the beginning. And I'll, I'll show you guys closer contact shoots. So this is Devin, he's, uh, he's, he's directing her. And this is her friend, I just shot a shot. So one, two, three, and you could see just me getting closer, working the scene. This is the best shot. Then move a little bit to the left, move a little bit this way. And it's very subtle, but if you look into the, if you look at the photograph, um, see the outline of her shadow and that little black pillar in the center of the frame. Notice that little white separation. That's absolutely critical. And it's, it's, it's hard to see this while you're shooting, but um, trying, I, I, when I was shooting this, I remember specifically trying to get a little bit of the white um, separation and in composition they call this figure to ground where you want a dark figure to be against uh, a white background. And But sometimes when you're shooting, it's kind of impossible to see this. So that's why it's so important to shoot and work the scene, take lots of different photos. 
a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, a little bit down, a little bit up. And then afterwards in the editing phase, when you're looking at photos on the computer, then you can choose the best image. So you can see here, her shadow is actually overlapping with uh, the pillar in the middle, which kind of kills it. Now she's looking, she's smiling, you know, she's talking. The moment's kind of over, right? And then just keep getting closer. Um, and uh, moving on, so tip number seven, provoke a response. Sometimes uh, a lot of photographers are like, you know, I wish I was invisible. I wish you know, no one could see me. And, you know, I used to feel that way too. But the funny thing is sometimes because the, viewer, uh, because the subject recognizes you and they, they note your presence and that you're perhaps interacting with them, by provoking a response from them, you could actually make a much more interesting photograph. So this is a photograph I shot recently in New York City. Um, this woman was amazing. She was actually, uh, I think she was 84, 85. Um, she, she was absolutely incredible. And uh, also shot this on a Ricoh GR, uh, 28 millimeter macro mode, got really close. And if you look at the contact sheet, you could just kind of see, it wasn't until the middle that um, by photographing her, uh, and there's actually a bunch of students around me too, because I was in the middle of teaching a workshop in New York. I had maybe like eight students around me and she just thought it was just ridiculous. So she just started laughing. And had she not started laughing, I wouldn't have gotten um, this photograph in this moment. Um, and uh, tip number eight is, when you see somebody interesting or someone incredible like this woman here, realize you're only gonna see them once, they're only gonna see them once in your life. So you don't wanna miss out on this golden opportunity to photograph them. And oftentimes when it comes to approaching strangers, uh, I'm a human being too. I get nervous. I'm afraid of rejection or people yelling at me or whatever. But knowing that I'll only, I might only see them once in my life um, is really the best motivation to just kind of work the scene and make lots and lots of different photos. And sometimes, once again, the very subtle differences could either make or break the image. So I'll just kind of show you all the shots. So you can see just first shots kind of head on. I'm working different angles. I'm shooting from lower angles. Asked her to look down, then asked her to look up so you could see how the exposure changes. And you know, these shots are okay, she's a cool subject, but really that's that's the shot when she just starts laughing, right? And I just barely caught it and I just keep working the scene, keep working the scene. And you know, this one's not bad, she's kind of smiling too, but the one of her just really belting out laughing. And once again, this, this photo wouldn't have been possible if I wasn't there with all the other students and she just thought I was ridiculous and started laughing in response to us. So provoking a response could be a good strategy when shooting street portraits. Okay, so uh, tip number nine, look for dramatic light. When you're shooting and the light's not so good where it's really, really harsh, uh, my practical tip is you could uh, just shoot uh, without a flash and do minus two or minus one exposure compensation. Uh, I was in downtown LA and I, I saw this guy with um, a cross tattoo next to his eye and this amazing tattoo on his neck. And I said, uh, I went up to him and said, oh, excuse me, boss, uh, you look badass. Um, do you mind if I made some photos of you and your tattoo? He said, yeah, sure, what do you want me to do? And essentially what I try to do, which is number 10, uh, tip number 10 is, I had him stand in front of this, um, this point where I saw the light cutting into his face. Um, and I asked him to stand there and just to not move. And actually what I ended up doing is asking him to not move, but at the same time, I actually physically um, held his shoulders and actually moved him a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right and asked him a little bit forward, a little bit back because, you know, um, and I'll show you guys the contact sheet. So this first photo, you could see um, his nose in the shadow. So I don't, I don't want that, right? Uh, in this case, his entire nose in the shadow doesn't work, doesn't work. I tried a horizontal shot. This works a little bit better. Works a little bit better. Nose is still in the shadow. This shot, some of these shots are actually shot with a flash. So you can see a little bit more detail. So without a flash, with a flash, with a flash, without a flash. So now uh, this shot's without a flash. And this is kind of what I'm trying to get at. And um, often when I'm shooting street portraits, uh, I'll try to shoot some photos with a flash and without a flash. Because you never really know which one will turn out better. And this is also the big tip in photography. Uh, don't chimp while you're shooting street portraits. Uh, just... Uh, chimping is when you're taking the photos, you look at the LCD screen afterwards. Work the scene and try to take as many photos as humanly possible. Then at the very end, you know, go home, download your photos and choose the best images. Because when you're chimping, you kill your flow. Um, you have fewer opportunities to shoot, uh, photograph your subjects. 
And also, I think it's kind of disrespectful to um, the subject as well. And a little bit less professional. And so you could see, yeah, how I was able to, you know, even subtle differences. Now I'm here, here like with, with the flash and getting like this shot is good, but then you got a little triangle in the top right corner and it's a little bit loose around the frame. Just by getting closer and really, really filling the frame, I think it made the shot. Um, in post-processing, I actually might have uh, burnt out that little triangle in the top right corner. Um, I think, yeah, I think I might have did. But you could see, once again, just working the scene is so critical. And at the time, of course, I don't know if this is the best shot, so I keep working the scene. Can't see his eyes here. It doesn't work. Can't see his eyes. Can't see his eyes. Um, shooting. So this shot is the raw file. I guess it didn't get post-processed, but I added this like a gritty black and white Neopan 1600 preset, which you can download on my blog. Um, and yeah, like you, you just kind of work out different variations because you never know what's going to work out well. And uh, the last shot is just a macro. And sometimes just f using the macro function of your camera, if you have one, could be a really good photo uh, making opportunity. Uh, and that's actually one of the, the benefits of shooting street portraits on, let's say, a DSLR or Micro Four Thirds on a Fuji X100 series. Uh, any other camera that has close focusing functionality or like macro, sometimes it's a little bit harder to shoot street portraits on, let's say, um, a rangefinder like a Leica because you just can't get that close. Um, these photos were shot, you know, either 28, I think at 28 maybe, and I'm literally like 20 centimeters away from his face. So you just have to get really, really close for these photographs. Uh, tip number 11. So just ask for eye contact. Um, you know, sometimes people look away, look at you, just to say, oh, can you get one shot of you just looking straight into the lens? And this is an amazing woman that I saw in the BART. And, you know, tiny old lady, and she had these amazing glasses, and I love the effect that it gave her eyes. And at first, I'm like, oh, you know, this old grandma, like, I don't, you know, I feel kind of guilty approaching her. Should I shoot a candy? Should I ask for permission? And, you know, I just like, okay, I'm going to feel really awkward if I shoot it without permission. So I'll just, you know, I'll just ask for permission. So I go up to her and I crouch down, get eye to eye level with her. And I say, oh, excuse me, miss, you know, uh, I love your glasses and I like your look. Um, do you mind if I made your photograph? And she told me, I kind of saw you with your camera eyeing me. And at first I was going to get pretty upset or hurt if you just shot my photo without permission. But because you asked so nicely with permission, of course you could take my photo. And I ended up, uh, you know, and I was like, wow, that's, that's so amazing. I ended up taking a bunch of photos of her and talking to her. And great story. She was actually an early feminist at uh, Berkeley. And you know, I live in Berkeley right now. And Cindy, um, my, uh, my partner, also studies at Berkeley. And, you know, she told me her life story and all of her life experiences. And sometimes I find that shooting street portraits, it actually gives me the opportunity to uh, talk to these people, learn more about their life stories, where they're from, uh, who they are. And I've, I often find these interactions even more valuable than the photographs themselves. And sometimes what will happen with street portraits is that you'll meet someone really, really interesting and make a really, really good photo of them. But, uh, sorry, let me say that again. Sometimes you'll meet someone really, really interesting and make photos of them. And the ultimate result is the photo is not very good, but you have a great story. Sometimes you don't have a good story, but you make a great photo. Um, I think for me, of course, it's always frustrating when you have a good story and you don't make a good photo, but I still value those experiences over than, than just uh, the images itself. And if you look at my contact sheet, these are all the different variations I shot. Uh, tip number 12 is when you're shooting a street portrait, try to shoot from different perspectives. So head on a little bit lower, horizontal, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. So take a look at my contacts. So this is kind of like a looser shot, getting a bit closer using a flash, getting really, really close, shooting 28, trying to shoot eye level with a flash, uh, shooting a horizontal shot with a flash, a vertical shot with a flash, taking a step back. And I asked her, ah, just, can you just keep reading your newspaper? She's like, sure. Uh, taking a step to the right. This photo, is, this photo is actually not too bad too. I like her look. Um, the face in the bottom right uh, left corner, but I still kind of like this photo because she just kind of has this mischievous look to her. I like her, her teeth, her lipstick, um, and of course the, the close up on the glasses, which I found was the most interesting part. And so now I'm a little bit to her right, shooting down, looking up, and she told me the story about her rings. Um, I don't remember the story anymore, but it was uh, really touching. 
and ask her to pose, you know, pose, put your hand to your face. His ones end up being a little bit too posy, but you never know. Uh, tip number 13. <laughs> uh, needless to say, you want to get really, really close. There's a saying that if your photos aren't good enough, you're not close enough by Robert Kappa. And, you know, of course, with, you know, there are, there are certain, uh, certain circumstances where you want to get further away from the subject, but there, there is too close, I think. But when it comes to the street portraits, I think the mistake that most street photographers make is that they don't get close enough. Uh, and also another practical tip, I, I didn't mention this before, but when it comes to shooting street portraits, I actually recommend not shooting anything wider than, a, uh, sorry, anything closer than a 50 mil. So a 28 mil, a 35 mil, a 50 mil, these all work pretty good. Um, I actually kind of like shooting street portraits with wide angle lenses because I think they're a lot more edgy and they're, they're more dynamic. 50 mil could be a little bit too standard. Anything longer than 50 mil it just kind of looks like um, you know, a headshot for Facebook or whatever. So this is a, a portrait of a man I met in Toronto and shot using macro mode. And once again, if you want to make a good street uh, portrait, you know, looking for, I think this photo works for different reasons. Uh, I like the simple background. I like the, the colors, the textures, the brown all around. Um, I love people smoking, even though I'm not a smoker myself, nor do I. Nor do I believe in smoking, but I think they make great props. And what I love about the photo is this is kind of the moment that he sticks his cigarette into his mouth and his kind of his hands coming off. So it kind of has a natural hand gesture. And uh, another tip number 14 is when you're shooting a short, uh, street portrait, another tip you could do to make them not so aware is talk to them and while talking to them, shoot their portrait. And you could see, oh my God, how many photos I shot. How many shoot? One, two, three, four. Okay, I shot more than like 60 or 70. I don't even know. And the best shot was kind of somewhere in between. And I'll just kind of quickly go through the photos. So in the beginning, we actually got kicked out by the bouncer <laughs> in front of a hotel. And you can see I took a bunch of photos that are vertical because maybe his hands were interesting. You know, his talking, I'm shooting. And keep shooting, keep shooting. Try to shoot a vertical with him sticking in, in the, because I liked his... Um, his jewelry on his wrist, you know, shooting, shooting. Yeah, this is kind of, this is a shot that I, I like the best. Getting closer, asking him to play with his watch. A shot of, is a close up of just his watch. Getting a shot of him looking into his watch. Clicking, clicking, clicking. Get a shot of him lighting up, looking down, playing with his watch. Once again, playing with his cufflinks. Kind of like the, the sad look here. Um, Another thing that I learned in street photography is, uh, or just shooting street portraits is what, one of the best things to do when you're capturing a portrait is you're trying to look for the quote, quote, unguarded moment is that where the, the subject, they kind of drop their guard and they're not aware of you, the photographer anymore. So I think this is actually kind of a good unguarded moment, even though it's not my favorite photograph. And you can see I'm trying some photos with a flash, some shots without a flash, the shots with the flash adds a little bit of fill light to lighten up his face. And when it comes to shooting street portraits with a flash, I just use P mode, ISO 800 or 1600. And um, yeah, just use uh, auto flash settings. So I'll turn it on and off. And so you can see sometimes without uh, having the flash on, by not seeing able to see his eyes, it makes it a little bit more mysterious as well. So clicking, 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 all scanning very close. Kind of interesting, the, the, where, the ones where you can't even see his eyes. So he kind of has like a skeleton look. Working the scene, working the scene. Work in the scene, and then a lady comes out. I photograph her. Work the scene, work the scene. Some close up shots of uh, when the cigarette's almost out. Shot with a flash. Shots from the side. This photograph, it almost looks like I shot it without him noticing me. Like, it kind of looks like a candid shot as well. So, yeah, I <laughs> shot a lot of photos. Um, another practical tip when shooting a street portrait is just ask your subject not to smile. Uh, this is actually a tip I learned from Martin Parr, who is um, a very accomplished Magnum photographer, probably one of my biggest inspirations. Uh, this is a photograph I shot in Istanbul. And I think most people, they look at this photo, they're like, wow, this guy looks like he's about to kill you. And most people actually assume this photo is shot with uh, permission. Oh, uh, sorry, without permission, candidly. But in reality, if you look at my contact sheet, you could see <laughs> the first photograph, he's actually smiling. Um, the, the story behind this photo is I have my camera on my neck all these people in the subway and I'm just like, oh my God, I just have to take a photo. So I bring up my camera about to take a photo and people are actually reacting to me like 
about to take a photo. I was like, wow, this guy's crazy. So let's start laughing. And then I made a photo. And I told this guy, one more photo. Be more serious. And then he starts smiling a little bit less here. And then by the last photo, I've waited long enough that everyone just kind of turns away. Then he, he just looks really serious at me. And this is the, the last photo. And uh, tip number 16 is, I think um, as a street photographer, you don't need to um, capture quote, quote, reality. I think you're in the business of capturing your own subjective reality. Uh, we're not the same as photojournalists or documentary photographers where you want to show the objective truth. You're trying to photograph what you see that's interesting and trying to create your own reality. And so I think even though your photo might be posed, like this photograph where I asked him to not smile, I was like, oh, that's not authentic. But to me, it's authentic in the sense that this is kind of the image that I wanted. And this is the way I kind of see the world. And so know that a posed photo can look candid. And just because a photo is posed, I don't think it makes it a worse photo. If anything, getting an interesting posed photograph, I think is actually much more difficult than capturing an interesting candid photograph. Just my opinion. And uh, I talked about this before, capture the quote, quote, unguarded moment. This is a wonderful woman. I was doing a road trip in Tucson, Arizona, and, you know, stop into um, a restaurant that sell, uh, serves Greek uh, Euro sandwiches. See this woman in the corner of my eye. I'm like, oh my God, she's got an amazing outfit. Like I love her red hair and her, her yellow outfit. So I go up to her. Oh, well, before I approach her, I'm like, I'm a bit nervous, but I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to totally regret it if I don't ask for permission. So I go up to her and I say, oh my God, miss, I love your outfit. I love your hair. Do you mind if I made your photograph? And she goes, yeah, you Asian people always like to take my photograph. I don't know why. And I'm like, it's because you look amazing. And she's like, okay, sure. And so this photograph, once again, it looks like kind of a, a candid photo. And people are like, oh, you're just bothering this nice lady and you're just flashing her in the face while she's eating her sandwiches. But I actually asked for permission. And so you could also see how uh, street photos tell lies. And if you look at the contact sheet, uh, I'll tell you the, the story. She first goes, oh, what do you want me to do? I'm like, oh, no, just show me your fingernails. So click. And she's like, oh, what's going on? Click, click. And uh, in this photograph, and I totally could have never predicted this in a million years. She goes, well, how does my lipstick look? And this kind of odd gesture and the, the blank look on her face, that's exactly what I'm trying to look for, the quote, quote, unguarded moment. And this is the more interesting, uh, most interesting photo. And you can actually see this photo is with flash, without flash. So aesthetically, you could see the difference. Um, for me, I prefer the look of the flash because it separates the subject from the background, adds a nice bit of contrast, nice bit of saturation. Here, I don't think is as nice. Um, so tip number 18, try shooting your street portraits with and without a flash. You never really know what's gonna look like, so just try to do both. Uh, number 19, tip number 19. Capture a hand gesture. So this is an interesting uh, gentleman I met in a Starbucks in LA. And I go into the I go into the Starbucks and I'm like, oh my God, this guy is amazing. Only in only in LA. And once again, I don't know why I'm kind of nervous to approach him, but I'm I know you see a red guy, a guy in a red cowboy outfit. You're only gonna see that once in your life. So I approach him, I start chatting with him. And yeah, like this guy was an interesting character. He told me he invented the internet and uh, I didn't quite believe him, but, you know, we had a nice chat. And at the end of it, I, you know, mustered up the courage and said, oh, you know, uh, I really love your outfit. Um, do you mind if I made a few portraits of you? He said, yeah, sure. He's like, what do you want me to do? And I just told him, I don't know, just pretend like you, this fix your tie. And so, you know, he pops out his collar, adjusts his tie, does it here. Um, this is kind of an earlier street portrait of mine. I mean, if I could do this again, I would have shot like 20 photos of him. But, you know, I'm actually quite happy with the end result. And tip number nine is capture hand gestures because just a portrait of somebody with their hands by their sides is generally not that interesting. I, I like to get photos in which people's hands are actually close to their face, which is actually tip number 20. <laughs> capture street portraits with their hands close to their face. Um, there are very practical ways you could do this. Um, you could say, oh, excuse me, miss, or excuse me, mister, you know, I love your glasses, your sunglasses, where'd you get those? And then what people will do is, you know, they'll use their hands and touch their glasses. And say, oh, this thing, and then they might even take it off. Then you go click, click, click. Or if they're wearing an interesting scarf or a tie, you know, I love your sky, your, uh, your scarf, your necktie. Um, 
and you know people will just casually you know start adjusting it without even thinking about it or you know point out their hair or something like that if they're not kind of getting the clue you could just be like can you can you get a photo looking cool with your sunglasses like put your hands near your sunglasses or you know fix your tie or you know can you get can you get some photos of you stroking your mustache or whatever and just shoot a bunch of photos and see what ends up working out the best in the end um tip number 21 almost winding down um shoot the same framing more than once so there's this one gentleman i saw in um uh, in a hotel in san diego and I go up to him and I say, oh, sir, you look so cool. Do you mind if I made a few photos? And he's like, yeah, sure. And I just take a bunch of photos. And you could kind of see, um, you know, the important thing is you want to use the same frame more than once. Um, so these photos, shot one and shot two, the framing is pretty much the same. And shots two and three are pretty much the same. But just take a look at his facial expression, and his eyes. So in the first shot, he's looking down. Second shot is looking straight at me, which I think is my favorite shot. The third shot is actually looking away. And so by shooting a lot of the, the same photos of the same framing, sometimes subtly having people turn away, look at you, you never know. Um, it's <laughs> This is a bad analogy, but sometimes if you ever had to photograph a child or photograph a dog, it's really hard to sometimes get them to look into the camera or away from the camera, what you want them to do. And uh, also shot some vertical shots because you never know. Um, and this is my contact sheet. Uh, and uh, last tip, capture the environment. So generally my problem in shooting street portraits is that I get too close sometimes that you don't really get a sense of place or where the, the person is. And so the reason I kind of like this street portrait is that it's kind of like an environmental portrait where by taking a step back, you kind of get a sense of place of where the subject is in their environment. Uh, sometimes it's good to have a sense of place that you want to know where they're at. Sometimes you don't want to know where they're at. You want to kind of get distant from them and have it be more anonymous. And yeah, that concludes uh, the presentation on shooting street portraits. Um, you know, this is a nice street, uh, not street portrait, but this is a nice portrait that um, my friend Josh White shot with me in Korea. And funny story, he actually shot this on his, he shot this on his compact camera with using an iPhone, uh, you know, the, the flashlight as a, an off camera strobe. And yeah, when it comes to street portraits, so some concluding thoughts. Um, one of the, the big tips I'll also give is the, the three second rule. So I actually learned this from, uh, apparently this is a rule when it comes to picking up uh, people at a bar is that if you enter a bar and you make eye contact with somebody who you find attractive or you want to talk to, you have approximately three seconds to approach them, offer to buy them a drink or start chatting them up because if that three seconds elapses and you turn around and you go somewhere else or you go to the corner of the bar and awkwardly look at the person, you're never going to muster up the courage to approach that stranger and shoot their street portrait. However, if you just don't think about it too much and approach them in that three second window, you're going to have the courage to do so. And same thing with street portraits. Um, you know, you see someone interesting in the street, you make eye contact. And you have about three seconds to approach them and just introduce yourself, stick out your hand, say, my name's, uh, you know, so-and-so. I'm a photography student. Do you mind if I made some photos of you? Uh, practical suggestions is when it comes to shooting street portraits, try to come up with a script or a certain introductory line that you have memorized. And try to experiment with different approaches. So, you know, say I'm a photography student. You could say, you know, I'm doing a portrait series of people in the streets, or you could be like, oh, you know, humans in New York, I'm kind of like that guy. Um, try out all these different approaches and, you know, maybe you could write it on a piece of paper and just write down your yes, no tally. And just know that, yeah, don't be afraid. Um, most people out there are actually very, very friendly and you know, great subjects. And also don't let the, the street photography community poo-poo you for shooting street portraits because I personally think it takes more courage to approach a stranger, ask for permission because it makes you more vulnerable to your subjects. And uh, another important point, the more you make yourself vulnerable to your subject, the more they're going to open up to you. So even if you approach yourself, introduce yourself, you know, you can say, um, you know, how your day is going, where you're from, uh, telling the, your subject a little bit more about your life story. Another practical assignment I could give you guys if you want to build up your courage when it comes to approaching strangers or interacting with them, um, what you could do is for an entire day, Every single person you interact with, let's say uh, a barista or you know, someone who's bagging your groceries, someone at the DMV, whatever, just say, you know, hey, what's your name? Shake their hand. Say, how's your day coming along? 
it's such a small gesture, but it really brings people to life because, you know, oftentimes people treat other people just like robots or like they don't have a soul. And just by asking, how's your day coming along? It's a very subtle gesture and people appreciate it so much. Or the next time, uh, another assignment, and uh, this is uh, definitely an awkward one sometimes. You ever go into an elevator and you turn around, there's a bunch of other strangers around you, everyone's pretending to look at their hands, their phones, or their feet. It's like the most awkward 10 seconds of your life, right? Next time you're in an elevator or with just another stranger, just say something stupid like, you know, how's the weather? Or it's so hot today, isn't it? Or, you know, what are you up to today? How you doing? And the more you're able to build up uh, just making small talk, the more comfortable you will, um, you are going to be approaching strangers and stuff like that. So yeah, so these are my basic thoughts on shooting street portraits. Uh, if you want to learn and build more confidence um, to shoot street portraits, you can go on the Google, search Eric Kim workshops, I think, yeah. And yeah, you can check out some of my upcoming street photography workshops. Um, often teach a lot of workshops on how to shoot street portraits. Um, you know, you can scroll down, look at my schedule. I actually have one coming up in ben Vancouver, one day street portrait crash course, or a lot of these other workshops where, you know, not just street uh, portraits, but street photography, building your confidence and courage. Uh, if you want to stay connected, you know, you could always go to the Facebooks. I'm Eric Kim Photography. Pretty simple. Say hello. Instagram at Eric Kim Photo. Or if you have any questions for me, the best way to contact me is just Twitter and just tweet at me at Eric Kim Photo. Yep, this is me at Eric Kim Photo and just say hello. And if you want to learn more about street photography, you could, of course, I'm sure you're looking at this in my YouTube channel. Yeah, just go to youtube.com, Eric Kim Photography, check out my videos. And I have a lot more. Oops, these are some behind the scenes stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, look at look at some other stuff on my youtube channels um and yeah thanks for watching guys um and also if you want to learn more about street photography you know you can just go to my blog ericinphotography.com blog go to the start here site and yeah check out you know my free ebooks on street photography and also a bunch of other free street photography lectures which are also linked to um, youtube so yeah thanks for watching guys and uh, peace out